Oi mate, what say we crack on the old war boss? Daka Daka! Greetings, fellow wizards. Or should I say war boss? Because this time around, we're working on the one and only Gazgal Magura Kraka! For the third time in a row, and this time we're working on the massive meaty metals, but also I'll be bringing some uh, finishing effects onto the armor. Now with the metallics done, I can bring some of the rusty tones into place and pull some of those streaks over some of the designs and patterns created in the last video, so be able to get a big step out of the way and basically have the, uh, the largest portions of his body all finished off. So, let's get into it. But we won't be needing these, because I'm narrating through this whole video, giving a try to the new format, but I like where it's going. So the first thing that I did was take a photograph of Gazgull under some harsh light with all the metallics base coated. This will give me an idea of how the reflections are working, but of course, as the artist, it's up to me to decide uh, where the final reflections lie and what I'm happy with as far as uh, creating a dramatic light situation with all these heavy reflections and oily metals. But it's given a base coat of Vallejo's gunmetal gray, which is just a nice deep silver um, all across all the metallic areas. Once I had all the metallics base coated, I mixed up my own wash using portions of FW sepia ink and Vallejo black and of course some water. Um, the reason I did this is because I get the best of both worlds. You have paint with a matte finish, and you have the ink, which adds a lot of viscosity to the equation, flowing into the crevices, and of course the brown and black tones combine to create a nice kind of oiled steel look. So we'll slather that mixture across the mighty claws, pipes, pistons, and boiler plates of gas gull. Don't forget the bullets. And once it's all dry and the wash is sunk into the crevices and kind of highlighted a lot of the details and seams. I took some more of that same mixture, this time with just less water involved, so it's thicker and I was able to blend with it instead of just washing it around. And uh, just many, many thin layers, about, about six coats. If you want to get really precise, I just do it until I'm happy, but layering these shadows down into my chosen areas until the colors showed nice and true, controlling the reflective qualities of the metallic paint. This took a while. Um, there's, there's a lot of shading and armor and different angles to contend with on Gaz Gull, but the struggle is always worth it because you get to the fun part, the highlights. The next step was to apply some very thin, scratchy, textured highlights with Stormhost Silver, uh, lifting my brush, placing it back down on the edge to create some irregularities, as well as some very light streaky lines, just creating superficial scratches all across uh, pretty much every surface, just like his armor. Um, metallic paints are kind of a different beast, you know, they have a lot more mixed into them, so it can be, can be a little painful to, uh, to use them and blend with them and line them. You have to keep going back to the palette to freshen your brush up a lot more than with opaque colors, but it's worth it, just like every other heavy weight that we've been lifting along this path. The next step was to create some rusty effects, starting off with some thin layers of bloodstone, and I want to apply these in all the cracks and crevices, anywhere that moisture is going to gather on the model and possibly run downward, or if there's like a little uh, protruding spike or a rivet, it gave me a chance to pull some rusty streaks and a uh, you know, kind of a, a vertical fashion. This can quickly get out of control, so just move about it cautiously. Less is more in this in this situation. Um, it also created a a nice interaction with the very base, like matte black armor, um, having this little spot tone of these bright oranges, kind of liven things up a little bit. After the bloodstone was dry, I mixed in a little bit of Kato Red highlight, brightening it up even further. You want to create the irregularities. Rust is never just one color, so adding a second or third tone in play is never going to hurt. Of 
course things are going to desaturate as they dry and kind of uh, lose a bit of vitality. So it's nice to have all these irregular layers building themselves up. Yes, you could uh, do the highlighting round after this step. I'm choosing to take the long road on this project because I want it, you know, we're working in, in degrees of subtlety. So doing the highlights, layering the rust on, and then repeating the highlights a second time, but applying them in smaller portions than before. Well, that's just the ticket that I was after. Also, on the areas painted with Warplock Bronze that I had kind of forgotten about during this whole process, I pulled out some brass casings from Secret Weapon and applied some highlights. Just using the same approach that I used to applying the metal highlights. Less is more, just a very small amount. And of course, using a little bit of Arcane Blue to create that turquoise oxidized tone that takes place on brass and copper. And also, since I had laid down these uh, streaks of, of rust and grime going over all of my other areas, the, the checkered patterns, the superficial scratches on the armor, I could then go in and reapply some of these highlights as well, using small amounts of Vallejo deck tan on the lower portions, using some pure titanium white on the upward facing areas, and of course adding more dents and scratches, however I see fit, or just Layering things up, layer after layer after layer. The web of distraction, AKA subtlety. There he is in final full force. I'm very happy to have this uh, larger step out of the way in the armor. I need to tackle the base, that's for sure. So we'll talk about that in the next video featuring Gazgull. Uh, since it's October, I'm just letting things ride and leading into the whole Orktober theme, so we'll see a lot more of Gazgull. Stick around, bear the stripes of progress in the form of paint all over your face and hands. Enjoy the ride. Better is always good, one step at a time. I believe in you.